welcome to all of you who are here with us this morning, those of you who are on Facebook, who are uh, on YouTube, we are glad you've joined us this morning as well. My name is Dave Stambaugh and it is great to be with you this morning. I'm going to direct your attention briefly to the bulletin for just a few announcements. I'm also going to encourage you to take that bulletin home with you. Uh, you can put it on the fridge as a reminder of upcoming events, reminder of the people to pray for. We would love for you to do that. First and foremost, this Friday, I hope you'll come out um, for our concert. We're having uh, Thomas, Gordon Thomas Ward, uh, a wonderful acoustic guitar player. It's a free concert. Uh, we'll have some coffee and cookies afterwards. Bring a friend, tell a neighbor, bring them to church and, and come and just have a great night of uh, acoustic gu guitar music. Um, and next Sunday at eight o'clock, I'm going to invite you all um, to pancake breakfast at the firehouse and you know what I'm buying they're on me all right you can put a little something in the fireman's boot if you want that would be great but pancakes are on me eight o'clock we'll meet down at the uh, at the firehouse next Sunday and then um, May 19th will be music appreciation Sunday uh, bring some folks to that as well that'll be a wonderful uh, way to celebrate our marvelous uh, music program here. If you are perhaps here for the first or second time and would like to let us know that you were here, we have a Welcome to Worship uh, book in the, um, in the lobby. We would love to have you sign that. You can also visit us online at EssexUCC.org. That's our church website. You're going to hear a theme this morning in our scripture readings. And it's very close to the theme that you're going to hear in our call to worship here in Psalm 90. We are like the grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered. Teach us to number our days aright so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Wisdom is exactly what we've been looking at throughout our study on the book of James and when Psalm 90 says, teach us to value our lives in such a way that we may make the most out of our time here, that's what it means to gain a heart of wisdom. And during this time that we have on earth together, our hope and our help is from God, our hope in ages past, our help for years to come. I'm so glad that Marv just walked in because this is her favorite hymn. I heard it's Fred's too. Uh, let's rise together and body your spirit. Number 25 in your black hymnal. Oh God, our help in ages past. Before you sit down, turn to those around you or maybe find someone new and introduce yourself and greet them with the peace of Christ.
great things about having a movable pulpit is when everyone sits in the back, they think they're gonna be in the back. <laughs> Mary Lawrence thought she was in the fourth row, now she's in the front row. How about that, Mary Lawrence? That's what you get, that's what you get. Um, we've had a interesting week here, haven't we? It's been a, a rough couple days for us. We've lost a number of uh, folks that we know and love. And those are the ones that have just been a part of our church. My guess with a crowd this size, you may have heard other news. L lost someone. Someone may have gotten a, 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 an unwelcome diagnosis. Someone may have uh, received bad news. Um, we will learn today that our time on earth goes so quickly, uh, which, it's, which is why it's so important for us to be together uh, during this time to pray for one another, to support one another, uh, to lift one another up and, and celebrate with each other in our joys, but also to pray for one another uh, in our times of distress, in our times uh, of sadness as well. So we like to take a few moments to just uh, pass the mic, so to speak, and see if there's anyone that would like to share any news with us, ways that we can support you in prayer, ways, ways that we can celebrate with you uh, if there is good news going on. So I have a mic if you would like to share anything with your family of faith this morning. Great, Mary Lawrence. I just want to say that my flowers are being shared for flowers that were given for Bob that his daughter did. So. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary Lawrence. My, daughter, my daughter's friend, Liam, uh, he's 21 years old. He's just been diagnosed with stage four brain cancer. So to please pray for his family and his siblings. Yep. Oh. They didn't hear? No. Um, my daughter's friend, Liam, has been just diagnosed with stage four brain cancer. He's 21 years old. So please pray for him and his family. So this is, I mean, this is why we're here, folks. Right? This is, this is what we do. We are here to support and uphold during these times of distress, these times of, of struggle. So as we begin, I'll invite you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I'll invite you to let go of the cares and concerns and worries that you brought into this place this morning. I'll invite you to simply rest in God's presence, rest in God's love. And may those who we pray for this morning know God's peace and God's comfort and God's strength. As we gather for worship today, O oh God, we are indeed, indeed grateful for this time that we can be together. This time to come together as a family of faith and uplift and uphold those who need a special measure of your grace and your touch this day. We are filled with your spirit and, and blessed with your grace. You invite us to reach out and love others as you have loved us. And so we ask this morning, for your care and your compassion. For those situations that we have named and those we hold dear in our hearts. We're also mindful of the pain and the suffering in our wider world as well the sorrow and loneliness that comes from war and hatred and prejudice and violence. 
May your love working through us help to bring hope and healing to a broken and hurting world. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the lives of those we love but see no longer. May their memory be a blessing to us in the days ahead. And we now remember in silence all those who have asked for our prayers this day. And we pray now together with the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. So we are continuing in our study of the book of James, and even though you're only hearing one verse from the book of James today, you will soon discover that it's part of a bigger tradition, a bigger theme from the wisdom literature in our scriptures. You will hear this theme repeat in the Psalms and Job and Proverbs and 1 Peter, and it's a simple, simple reminder that life is short. Good morning. The readings from the wisdom tradition of the skip scriptures. Lord, what are human beings that you care for them, mere mortals that you think of them? They are like a breath, their days are like a fleeting shadow. All people are like grass, and their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers, and the flowers fall. For we are born only yesterday and know nothing, and our days on earth are but a, sh but a shadow. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. Therefore, do not boast about tomorrow. You do not know what tomorrow will bring or what your life will be. For you are like vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Thank you, Mary Lawrence. Are you sensing a theme here? Don't worry. All right, it's a pattern with a purpose, okay? I promise you. This first slide basically just says the same thing a different way. Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while and then it's gone. And you might think that this is going to be a sad and depressing and morbid morning with thoughts like these. But if you stick with me, if you stick with me, I hope to surprise you. I gave you a, a sneak peek in our e-news this week that my hope is that we will all walk away with some insight into these scriptures and a new appreciation for what they are trying to teach us. Because as we said in our prayer time, it has been a difficult couple weeks, right? Audrey, Bob, and Sherry, Great service if you were here on Friday for Bob Johnson. The choir did an amazing job. You know how Bob likes to sing, right? There were probably close to 40 people in the choir from all of Bob's singing groups. Sherry did an amazing job. And even though we know that it's coming for us, it catches us off guard, doesn't it? We're surprised when it happens. Here's a question to 
get us started today. Do you remember, do you remember the first funeral that you went to? How old were you? 11. How old were you when you went to your first funeral? 12. 12? 9. 9? 12, 14, 7? 2? Well, Dud's got me beat. Dud was 2. I have uh, 5 or 6. I wrote down. Uh, it was my grandmother in Florida. Uh, it was hot. And all I could wish for then was, it would be nice if it was cool, so this is a perfect day right here. <laughs> right? But at five or six, you don't really know anything. You're in a suit, and you're in a limousine, you don't really know what's going on. But I was 14 years old when Dust in the Wind came out. Some of you may not know that song by Kansas, but a great, great song. I'm looking around at all the people who know that song. Yeah, there's some here that are too young, some that are too old, but I close my eyes only for a moment and the moment is gone. Dust in the wind. All we are is dust in the wind. Now I will confess that the last thing you're thinking about at 14 years old, when you're buying the new Kansas album at Scotty's Records in Summit, New Jersey, is the meaning of life. But the more time we spend with songs like these and scriptures like these, the older we get, we're reminded over and over that the inevitable is right around the corner. These scriptures that you just heard and, and that song by Kansas also helps us Remember our Ash Wednesday liturgy. I know you only hear it once a year, but do you remember what the pastor usually says when he or she makes the cross on your forehead with the ashes? Do you remember what they say? Most times you'll hear these words. Remember you are dust. And to dust you shall return. Because the one thing that unites us all, right? No matter our background, no matter our education, no matter our wealth or lack thereof, is the fact that these verses that you just heard are basically stating the obvious, right? That we will all die. We all have... 24 hours in a day, and one day, for all of us, those hours will run out. I gave my music illustration for those folks who like music. Now I'll give my soap opera illustration for those folks who like soap operas. Who remembers how that, introdu how that introduction went? Like sands through the hourglass. So are the days of our lives, right? Like sands through the hourglass. So are the days of our lives. I don't think these scriptures are trying to be morbid. I don't think they're trying to be sorrowful and, and sadful. I think they serve a higher purpose. I actually think they're an inspiration. to not take life for granted. To live each and every day to the fullest, knowing how valuable our time is. Because it's short. I think that's the lesson that all of these verses are trying to teach us. The verse from James is set in a larger context of the pros and cons of long-term planning and it's very similar to a parable that Jesus tells. James sets up his own parable of sorts with people who are planning a business trip to a city. And they say, hey, let's, 
let's go down to this town or that town and let's set up a business and let's make some money and we'll, we'll have some, some business in this town and, and, and it'll be great. Right? That's when James says, hey, listen, you don't even know what tomorrow will bring. For you are a vapor or a fog or a mist that's here for a little while and then it's gone. And Jesus tells this parable about a certain rich farmer who produces a big crop. I think we've <clears throat> probably talked about it before already. He says, my crop was so good this year, I, I think what I need to do is I need to tear down my small barns and big build, build bigger barns so I can store all my stuff. And then in this parable, he hears God say, oh, you foolish man. This very night, your life will be required of you. This very night will be your last on earth. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Now these days, I think you would call that an inheritance, right? The children will get what you've prepared. And in James, we would call that long-term revenue projections. Right? Both of which are very legitimate financial practices. But a lot of people take those verses and say, you know what? You shouldn't get life insurance. You know what? You shouldn't plan to have an IRA. You, you, you shouldn't do this, that, or the other thing because your life is a vapor and you never know what's going to happen. If I can be so bold, I think those folks are wrong. I don't think that's what they're trying to teach us here. Stories like these are meant as, an, as a reminder. It's an encouragement to smell the roses and appreciate and celebrate each moment. And so what I'd like to do this morning, I'm gonna give you six words to help remember everything we're talking about. You don't have to remember any of the illustrations. You don't have to remember any of the stories. You don't have to remember the opening to Days of Our Lives. Just six words. Now, they are in Latin. All right, so if you've studied Latin, you're gonna be ahead of the game a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at that next slide, choir. Who knows this first one? Time flies, right? We all know what that means. Here's what it means to me. I feel and I'm being totally serious. I really feel sometimes like I just graduated college. All right? Not that funny. <laughs> Marilyn's over there. <laughs> the friends that I graduated college with now have kids who are graduating college. Tempest Fiji. Time flies. If you saw Dead Poets Society, you know this next phrase. Carpe diem. Seize the day. You guys are Latin scholars. Amazing. Seize the day, that great speech, right, that Robin Williams gives. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Make your lives extraordinary. Now, the real Latin scholars might know this next one. Memento mori. Anyone? Here's it. Here's, here's a memento mori. And, it, and there's a whole theme here. Time flies. Seize the day. Remember you will die. It's basically the same thing that all of our scripture readings are saying, right? Just a reminder that you will die. And memento mori is a sort of a symbolic figure of speech that can also be a, a, a very valuable spiritual and meditative practice. It's a, a reminder of our mortality. It's, it's basically that Ash Wednesday service. Remember you are dust, and to dust you will return. 
So I got music, I've got uh, soap operas. Who saw True Grit? Need a movie in here today as well. Do you remember True Grit? Did you see the remake of True Grit? If you like the original, go home and watch the, uh, uh, watch the remake. I think it was from about 2010. And I only say that because I didn't see the original, right? But in the remake, there's a final scene that is so powerful to me. Maddie Ross, the young girl, right, who you see in the beginning of the movie, is grown up. And she goes to see good old Rooster Cogburn's grave, right? There's a scene where she's standing at this tree over a family plot of tombstones. And she simply says, time just gets away from us. Oh, wow. Right? Time just gets away from us. We avoid these scriptures that remind us that we are dust, vapor, withering flowers, and falling grass because we think they're depressing. We think of death as losing a fight or battle with disease or sickness. But I think what these verses are actually trying to tell us couldn't be further from the truth. They are an encouragement. They are an inspiration to live each day fully, to make the most of each moment, and to enjoy every second of life. It's basically what Susan said about Bob yesterday, wasn't it? that he lived his life with no regrets. I'd love to have someone say that at my funeral. He lived with no regrets. All of our verses today come from the wisdom tradition of the scriptures. And if you remember the definition of wisdom literature, it's designed to help us navigate life successfully. Right? And in order to navigate you need to know the destination, right? You need to know the destination. So I can think of no better way to navigate life successfully than to begin with the end in mind. Memento mori. Let all these verses remind you not only of how short life is, but also how valuable life is. And how you can make a difference in someone else's life with something as simple as a hug. Something as simple as a kind word, a few minutes of your time to listen, to reach out, to live out that great commandment of Loving your neighbor. If Latin is a challenge for you, but I don't think it is. You guys all did very well. Here's some English words. You guys can pull up that next slide. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes, and, and it's, it's sort of a benediction of sorts. And I'm, I'm hoping that everyone in the back can read that. This is such a wonderful quote. What I'd like us to do is, I'd like us to all read this together, if you can read that. Can you guys read that in the back? You good? Let's read this together. Life is short. We don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who walk this way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Tempus fugit. Carpe diem. Memento mori. Amen. One of the ways that we gladden the hearts of those who journey with us is through the ministries of this church. 
And we can't do that without your faithful and generous giving. So on behalf of all those who benefit from all of the ministries that we participate in, I thank you on their behalf. As Kevin and the choir get in place for our offering, I will remind you that there is a QR code in your bulletin if you would like to give electronically this morning. And if you are watching online, that QR code will be on the screen in just a moment. Again, thank you for your support of our ministries. As the ushers come forward, we will gratefully receive our morning offering.
that line? That last verse, no fear in death. Amen. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we offer these gifts as a sign of our gratitude for the gift of life together. May we continue to celebrate each moment as we share the good news of your love with those around us. Amen. Our closing hymn is sort of a newish one, so I'm going to have Kevin play it through once, and then we're going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4. It's not noted in your bulletin, but we'll sing verses 1, 3, and 4 after Kevin plays through once for us. Thank you, Kevin. time to gladden the hearts of those who journey this way with us. So be swift to love. Make haste to be kind. Because tempest fugit. So carpe diem. And memento mori. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.